I slept like I used to sleep years ago. Like a miner or a soldier. Empty, dead tired. Then I saw Tessa, my darling little daughter. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't recall her face. I reached out to her, but she just kept getting further and further away. Then I saw Molly. But she wasn't real, just the ghost of a memory. I'm here, I cried, but all I heard was laughter. Not hers. Who's there? Suddenly, she appeared. Natasha. Just stood there laughing, but her eyes were cold. Then she said something. Painted red, painted red, painted red. That was just a dream, Sonny. Nothing more. I looked at Marty and I saw the same thing in his eyes as he probably saw in mine. It's time to hit the brakes, to turn back, go home and forget about all of this. <laughs> of course, I stepped on the gas instead. Honestly, I wasn't expecting anything good, but this... Ooh, just like a horror movie. I was thinking the same. Appearances can be deceiving. Let's hope so. This guy seems strangely familiar to me. You don't say. You've been treated here, too. That would explain a lot. Oh, don't be stupid. I'm serious. Take a closer look. No. Well? No, it can't be. Are you telling me it's him? M.B. Davis himself? I'm sure of it, pal. It seems the gossip was true. The eternal king of jazz in a madhouse. Oh, no, no, no. Poor devil. Huh. It doesn't matter how big a star you once were. Ending up lonely and crazy in a rotting insane asylum in the middle of nowhere is like the universe restoring its balance. That was very uh, poetic of you, Marty. Almost deep. Careful you don't drown. Cluck you. It doesn't matter how big a s We should go to reception first. Let them know we're here. Even if you manage to escape, there's nothing but hills and forests for a hundred miles. Imagine how many poor lunatic ghosts must haunt those woods. Ooh, Sonny, you're creeping me out. Insane ghosts in the woods, Marty. Sonny, it's not funny. This picture... It's very... Special? This... Like an angel from heaven, isn't she? Yeah, half of her's still up there, I think. That's rude. Ah, oh, boo-hoo. What do you think? Can she hear us up there? Sonny, stop being so heightist. It's a different world nowadays, you know? Yeah, yeah, okay. Cry me a river. I'm forever amazed by what an asshole you are. What do you think? Can she... Of all the great wild ones... Greetings, miss. Is it really you? 
Well, uh, yes. Yes, it really is you, the chicken police. I'm afraid so. Oh, of all that's furry and plumy, that's fantastic. Oh, my goodness. Uh, miss, we'd like to ask... Please, don't be scared. I'm just really, really, really excited. You know, I've read every book about you and your adventures, and I even collected newspaper articles when I was a little girl. Indeed. You can't imagine what an honor it is to meet you in person. We really... Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Take a deep breath, Miranda. Take a deep breath. Are you okay, miss? Yes, I am. I just needed some... air. So, dear detectives, Santino and Martin, what can I do for you? Well, miss, uh, we have some questions, if you don't mind. I'd love to answer all of your questions, detectives. but I still can't believe it's really you. Neither can we. You can't imagine how wonderful it is that I can help you in one of your cases. <gasps> Does this mean it will become a new book? And maybe I will be in it? Uh, miss, those books aren't really... Don't even tell me. No, 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 I don't want to know. Let it be a surprise instead. No, I, I didn't mean... Leave it to me, Sonny. I'm good at this. Thank you, miss. Your words are very flattering, and we are honored. No, I thank you. I'll never forget this day. We won't either, that's for sure. We're happy to bring you joy, miss. Anytime. Please, I'm at your service. Thank you, miss. Say, miss, uh, what can you tell us about this place? Our institution was standing even before the Great Meat War, and during the war, it was transformed into a military hospital. Since then, we are relentlessly working on treating injured minds under the leadership of Dr. Quetzal, the famous specialist. The place seems pretty empty. Do many people work here? We have 32 residents and 7 nurses, including me. We also have a three-person maintenance and cleaning staff and, of course, the heart and soul of our institution, Dr. Quetzal himself. I see. Now this Dr. Quetzal, is he the director here? Exactly. Director, scientist, researcher, patron, and doctor. And even a friend. Quite a guy. He certainly is. So who is this Dr. Quetzal exactly? He's a world-famous researcher of the mind, Mr. Featherland. He published countless books in the fields of psychology and psychotherapy. Psycho... what? Unraveling the mind. It's the most crucial mission of the century, Mr. McChicken. That's really good to know. So this doctor's some celebrity, right? Does he usually meet uh, other important persons? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Well, like uh, Mr. Hobart Wessler, for example. Ah, uh, yes. That's something you should ask the doctor himself, but unfortunately, I don't think he has time right now. He's swamped, is he? Exactly, Mr. Featherland. He is very, very, very busy. All the time. I thought so. Now, what can you say about this, miss? Have you uh, seen anything like it? Of course. 
Our residents wear these for identification. But how did you come by it? They only wear them inside the institution. Huh, I see. The wristband does belong to one of our residents. But I'm afraid I'm not allowed to tell you more due to regulations. Oh, come on, Miranda. It's us, the chicken police. I'm sorry, I, I can't. Miranda, this case is a matter of life and death. Lives are in your hands. <sighs> All right. All right. I'll do it. Albert Wessler. The patient's name is Albert Taddeus Wessler. Figures. Just as we thought. Thank you, Miranda. We'll never forget this. Please, don't make me blush. And don't tell anyone you heard it from me. Oh, we won't. I promise. So when can we talk to Mr. Wessler? I need to ask Dr. Quetzal. Please wait here. Thank you. Dr. Quetzal will see you. He's waiting for you in his office. Up the stairs, all the way down the hall, until the last door. What a surprise. It's enough to mention Wessler's name and all the doors are open. I wouldn't want to get mixed up in this, but... Do you think Albert is in danger? Danger? What do you mean? We haven't heard from him since he disappeared. And we're really, really worried. I see. Uh, we don't know yet, miss, but let's hope for the best. Great Wild Ones protect him. Where is he? No idea, Marty. The smell ugh, of all that's furry. I'll never get used to it. Well, reptiles have a disgusting body odor, Marty. But they feel exactly the same about us. Exactly. Great wild ones, you scared the hell out of me. I already sensed your arrival from afar. You know, snakes have a different sense of smell. And birds used to be our prey once upon a time. Well, yeah. Luckily, we're living in civilized times. Lucky. Please, take a seat. How can I help you, gentlemen? Your office is, uh, rather Puritan. <laughs> Simple, I mean. Ain't that the truth? Well, yes. I can't let my mind wander from my work. I only keep what's essential in my office. I see. That makes sense. Is this cell like, uh, like the others? I would rather call it a room. But yes, it's like all the others, except there are even bigger ones than this. Is this cell... Is this cell... An isle of reason in a sea of insanity. 
Insanity is such a strong word, and it's mostly an abstract idea. Where does insanity start, and how long is one not insane? Interesting questions. Am I normal, or are you? Maybe neither of us. You see, that's something I think about a lot nowadays. If you like, I can give you an appointment. Oh, this is your chance, Sonny. Don't miss it. We're already here. Marty, clock up. Are you very busy? I am. Why do you have bars on your windows? Because it's a room like all the others, and I'm just an animal, too, like all our residents. With the significant difference of you being a doctor and not a patient, am I right? It's not as big of a difference as you'd think. So, escaping is impossible. If I'd want to escape, I have the privilege of using the door. <laughs> so... A snake. I can't help it, but they make my feathers stand on end. To be honest, gentlemen, your visit is anything but a surprise. I could even say I was expecting it. What an introduction. Please forgive me. I have the bad habit of immediately getting into the middle of things. How very rude of me. My name is Dr. Seth. He was Quetzalcoatl, but most call me Dr. Quetzal to keep it simple. The name is Santino Featherland, and this is my partner, Martin McChicken, from... From the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department. Your fame is one step ahead of you. Ah, we're used to it. Certainly. We have some questions about one of your patients, if you don't mind. We'd like to talk to him, if that's possible. Please be specific, Detective. Look, Doctor, we're too tired to play cat and mouse. Not that snake and chicken sounds any better. Very funny, I must say. Just what I expected from you two, Detectives. We know you know it's about Albert Wessler, Ibn Wessler's secret twin. Ever since we've said his name, all the doors have miraculously opened. That's what we call a bullseye. Well, yes. Why should I deny it? We're talking about a rather illustrious patient here, who's also a very particular medical case. Now, that's much more interesting. So, are you willing to talk about him? Because Albert regrettably has disappeared, and you are police detectives, I have no reason not to talk to you. Of course, I'm at your service. But you must understand, I can't disclose information about my patients. Not even if it's a matter of life and death? Everything's a matter of life and death in here, Detective. This is a hospital, even if it's primarily for the mind, not the body. Still, I'd like to give the impossible a try. Please, Detective, just do your job and I'll do mine. I have a hard time bearing their proximity. My blood boils and my heart bangs. It's the primordial fear, they say. So, what do you want to know, gentlemen? Let's see.
How long was Albert a resident of the institution? For quite some time, his first symptoms surfaced in his teens. Depression, panic attacks, and schizophrenia. Was he brought here immediately after the first signs that something wasn't right? You know, the biggest problem with an opinion on insanity is that animals are ashamed of it. That's the reason our institution stands out here in the middle of nowhere. Because animals would rather hide what they're afraid to face. I couldn't have said it better myself. As far as I know, the Wessler family wasn't exceptionally wealthy. Indeed, they were rather poor, but we offer our services gratis. Then how do you sustain yourselves? By the grace of the treasury of King Hector III, of course. I wouldn't have guessed that. My family and the royal dynasty had always been on good terms, Mr. Santino. What kind of a place is this exactly? I assume it wasn't built as an insane asylum. It used to be a mansion. Construction started during the occupation in 622. Then it stood empty for almost a century until finally it went to the crown of Clawville when Hector's great-grandfather took the throne. The rest is history. How long have you been working here? I've worked here for more than 30 years, but it's been in my family's possession for almost 150 years. So if I count correctly, as soon as it went to the crown, it was seized by your family. That's almost accurate, Mr. Featherland. What a lovely inheritance. Tell me, Doctor, do you know Madame Zavas? Just like everybody else, I've heard of her. But I never had the pleasure of meeting her in person. I'm sure she's an interesting case. Oh, you can be sure about that. I'd gladly get you two together if I had the chance. A spare cell would suit her very much. Is that so? As it turns out, she likes small, narrow, secret places. Oh, I see. What a coincidence. Dr. Quetzal's a real mystery, but I can turn that to my advantage. I just need to focus on the strangest pieces of the puzzle. So when did Albert become a resident of your institute? Albert and Hobart, or Ibn as you call him, arrived here almost exactly four years ago. Could you describe that day uh, more specifically? It was not long after New Year's Eve. Maybe the first week of the year, if I'm not mistaken. It was sleeting that day. Wind was banging incessantly on the windows. The power was going out for short periods of time. What was your first impression of them? I already knew the Wessler name. I knew who they were. Or at least I knew one of them, Hobart Wessler. He was famous. Gangster, moneylender, celebrity, lover. And Albert? He was new to me, an invisible gray ghost. The family had tried to keep his existence a secret. Why? Because they were ashamed of him, of course, Mr. Featherland. That's how it usually is. What was your first impression of him? He was 
silent, but observed everything that surrounded him. His eyes were constantly moving, never stopped for a second. Was he afraid? I wouldn't say so. It seemed to me that he wanted to move into our institution voluntarily. It looked as if he couldn't wait to be here, alone, locked up in silence and darkness. Didn't you think of that as unusual? Of course I did, but who am I to judge? It was rather special treatment. What kind of special treatment did Albert get? You know, if an institution like ours has to accept a Wessler as a guest, there's bound to be some favoritism. And complete secrecy, I guess. Yes, but that's the case for all our patients, Mr. Featherland. Of course. So in what way did he receive more than the others? Basically, we don't admit anyone into our institution without a complete and thorough prior assessment. In the case of Albert, we put that aside. So you didn't even know if he had anything wrong with him? Initially, no. He was more of a guest than a patient. How did Albert relate to you? Albert was immensely sophisticated and polite, so much so that his true emotions and thoughts could not be deciphered. And that's why you thought of him as an exciting case. That's right, Mr. Featherland. I see you're starting to get to know me in some way. I'm just doing my job, Doctor. You and me both. Are you telling me Albert had multiple personalities? We found out very quickly that there was no other reason for the cause of his seizures. He had a cold and calculating personality who sometimes, especially on stormy days, took the reins over their shared mind. He had these seizures from the beginning. Yes, Mr. Featherland, but they started to intensify after Albert left our institution for the first time. He did what? Left the institution? More than once? Oh, yes, Mr. Featherland. Albert left the institution on several occasions until the last time when he failed to come back. Wetzel's not only very observant, but he's addicted to details. I must focus on that if I want to get closer to the truth. Focus. Addicted to details. When and why did Albert leave the institution for the first time? It was about two years ago. Mr. Hobart Wessler appeared and demanded we let his brother go free. Naturally, we obliged. We had no idea if we'd ever see him again. But you did. He returned the same day. Albert was ecstatic. He was unrestrained. I could almost say <laughs> happy. That was unusual for him? 
I had never seen him like that before, Mr. Featherland. He just smiled and stared at the empty wall for hours. Did he ever tell you what happened to him outside? Of course he did. Albert and I had a good relationship. He was working on a painting for his brother. Was it a painting of a lovely lady cat? Oh, exactly. So you already knew about that. Yes, Dr. Quetzal, I've seen it. Has Albert ever talked to you about Natasha? Only in superlatives. As if he wasn't talking about a real person, but an ethereal being, about an angel or a demon. Something that is not of this world. And what did you think about his uh, fantasies? We are in an institution where almost everyone is hallucinating on a daily basis, Mr. Featherland. It didn't really bother me, but the fluctuations of positive and negative were more disturbing. Thanks, Doc. I didn't understand a word, but I think I get the point. So Albert left on many occasions to continue working on the painting. Exactly, Mr. Featherland. Every time he came back, he was like a different person. But unfortunately, his seizures also multiplied and became more dangerous. More dangerous? Albert was hurting himself. And on one occasion, he even tried to hurt me. It was unprecedented. It seemed his confined personality was taking over their shared mind entirely, piece by piece. Do you think the painting caused it? Not the painting, Mr. Featherland. But its subject. Exactly. He was obsessed right until that fateful day when he returned to us for the last time. What exactly happened that day, Doctor? It wasn't Hobart who brought his brother back that day, but two of his gorillas. Not literally, I mean. And Albert was in a terrible, terrible state. What happened to him? I don't like to talk about that, Mr. Featherland. It could be vital to the case, Dr. Quetzal. Don't back down. Oh, you're right. There's no use turning back now. So, Albert's tongue was torn out, or cut off, I don't know exactly, and he was blinded in one eye, or rather, one of his eyes was missing entirely. So you're saying Albert was brought back horribly mutilated? Yes. And they didn't give any explanation as to what had happened. They simply told me it was some kind of accident. Dr. Quetzal is cold and professional, but he's also very confused. Maybe it's cruel, but I must exploit his vulnerability if I want to learn everything about Albert. Focus, confused.
Maybe it's not easy for you to talk about it, but did you examine his wounds thoroughly? I'm not that kind of doctor, Mr. Featherland, but even I could determine his tongue was either cut out or bitten off and his eye was gouged out. He also had several broken bones. But there's no doubt it wasn't an accident. I don't believe it was, Mr. Featherland. I totally agree. Concentrate, Doctor. What do you think happened to Albert? I'm sure it was Hobart. He ordered his men to mutilate poor Albert. But why would he do that? Maybe Albert saw something he could accidentally reveal. To whom? The four walls? A couple of crazies? You? To anyone, Mr. Featherland. I don't think it's that simple, Doctor. But thank you for your honest opinion. You're welcome, Detective. What happened then? How did Albert disappear? A few weeks later, Hobart came to visit Albert one more time. Albert had been in terrible condition by then. We even had to transfer him to another cell, a more safe one. What did Hobart do during the visit? He didn't do anything. He just sat and watched his brother, who was uh, in an almost vegetative state by then. Couldn't you manage to draw anything out of him? You or Hobart? Nothing. For a while, he was trying to signal something. Perhaps he was too afraid. And most likely his fingers had been broken too, so he couldn't even write. Do you think Hobart could have killed Albert? It's horrible to say it, but I'm sure of it. How did he disappear in the end? Did someone come for him? That's what's most eerie about it all, Mr. Featherland. He simply disappeared. His door, which only I had a key for, was open. Did anyone see anything? No one. We interrogated the staff, even the patients. He simply vanished off the face of the wilderness. We don't know what happened to him. Unfortunately, I have a hunch. Thank you, Doctor. You've been a great help. Oh, well, I'm glad I could be of help. But please, I now must attend to my work. We understand, Doctor. Thank you.
That's quite shocking information. I think you understand why we kept it a secret. If it wasn't for Mr. Wessler's demand, we'd never let any of our patients walk freely outside our institution. Then the, uh, the accident happened. Accident? <laughs> we didn't believe it, not for a second. After Albert came back to us, horribly mutilated, he was different. Different how? If someone got one of his eyes poked out and his tongue torn out, he'd be different, but not like this. Albert was a different person. We believe you, Doctor. So, can we take a look at Albert's cell? I'd rather call it his room. Mr. Wessler lived in exceptional circumstances. Thanks to the Wessler name, I guess. Yes. Well, we try to make all of our patients stay as comfortable as possible, but Albert certainly enjoyed mm, special favoritism. I hope you don't mind if we take a look around in there. That's not going to bother anyone. Well, that's uh, surprising. I've never seen a cell like this before, that's for sure. I wouldn't mind living here myself. It seems that being a Wessler gets you privileges. And a healthy dose of danger. Mostly that, yeah. Let's take a good look around. I'm sure we'll find some answers here. I can almost smell them. Well, I smell... paint? Ink? Plaster? Some kind of oil? Aging paper? Slight smell of rat and... Great expectations. What the dickens? Unmistakable. Yeah. This place is bad for you, pal. But if you've already jump-started your beak holes, then sniff out the solution. I'm on it, boss bird. Is this some kind of puzzle? I don't think so. But we could still find something important here. A pattern, a sign, anything. A small window, a small hope. You know, I don't think he had it so bad in here. You mean, apart from being separated from everyone you love in an ancient mansion filled with madmen? Eh, you're right. As always. Well, I guess the bed has to find a new owner soon. Are you really so sure he's not alive anymore? No, I never said that. The style. It's very familiar to me. You've been lonely for far too long, huh? Not funny, Marty. It is. A little. So this is an original Albert Wessler. I think so. It's pretty good, I must say. And I saw something very similar in Natasha's room. 
You kept me out of it. Sorry, little boy. Maybe next time. Whew, it's hot in here. Okay, Marty, that's enough. Identical twins. And looking at it, they may have easily loved the same woman. Two men and one woman. Nothing good ever comes of that. <clears throat> well, I wouldn't say that exactly. Of all the wild ones, Marty, please, stitch up your beak, okay? Just use your imagination, old bird. Scribbles. Newspaper articles, study papers, poems, perfect chaos. Just like the troubled mind of a troubled fella. Yeah, but there's still a kind of order in it. It's just too intricate for you to comprehend. If you say so, boss. Isn't this familiar, Sonny? Just like your office and your desk. Taking a better look around, I can find even more similarities. Marty... Okay, okay. Shut up, Marty. I know. Look at that. A letter. Isn't this familiar? It's a piece of a painting, judging by... Come to daddy. Identical twins. And looking at it, they may have easily loved the same woman. Albert was madly in love with Natasha and would have done anything for her. I'm afraid he did exactly that. What do you make of this? Apart from the fact the guy was totally insane? I don't know. What should I? That maybe we've been chasing the wrong person all this time, Marty. What do you mean? Everything will be revealed soon. Why do you have to be so melodramatic all of a sudden? If I'm right, this'll flip the whole case upside down. What's that, Sonny? A blurb from some horrible novel? I just have to think things through before I come to any hasty conclusions, Marty. Ugh, you're killing me. So, what now? Where to? Back to Clawville, where we can finally put all the pieces together. <sighs> you're driving me crazy. But all right, let's go home. Detectives, have you found what you were looking for? I'm afraid we have, Doctor. And more. I wouldn't dare to say I'm happy to hear it, but I'm glad to be of service to you. Well, thanks, Doc. I hope I don't offend you by saying I hope we're not going to meet anytime soon. <laughs> not on account of either of our jobs, am I right? Exactly. What can you tell us about the woman in the photo we saw in Albert's room? Do you mean Miss Natasha Katsenko? Well, yes. I don't know much about her, but everyone heard her name and her voice around here. Did she ever visit this place? Never. 
But if you ask me, Natasha probably didn't even know Albert was a resident of our institution. And Albert, did he mention her often? Constantly. It was obvious he had an affection for Miss Katsenko, but I wouldn't have thought for a moment he could escape because of her. I wouldn't jump ahead, Doctor. Something else could be behind Albert's disappearance. Do you think so? All the signs clearly indicate this. Maybe they do, Doctor, but in my line of work, logic's not always the best advisor. In 99% of cases. Exactly. But this one typically belongs to the remaining 1%. If you say so. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, detectives. I have a hard time. Are you very busy? Farewell, Miranda, dear. Lovely to meet you. So, you'll remember my name? Marty McChicken never forgets, ma'am. Oh. Furry gods. Let's go. Goodbye, miss. It was a pleasure. Goodbye, gentlemen. And happy investigating. I'm sure it'll be fun. If there's anything I can help you with, please just ask. Thank you, Miranda. You've already helped enough. Huh. It doesn't matter how big a st Please, I'm at your service. Thank you, miss. This picture. Well, it must have been made by one of the patients, so it's understandable. It's the handiwork of our director. He's not only a scientist, but he's a great painter, too. I see. Well, it's lovely to have a hobby, right? That's right, Marty. Art heals, doesn't it? Exactly, officers. We need to let them know we're here for insane goat.